Hi, it's Chris with Implied Music. Today we're going to look at a type of synthesis called subtractive synthesis. It's a fundamental way of making sounds in um, the earliest synthesizers, the ones that were around when dinosaurs and uh, young Chris walked the earth. Um, and it's still present in the digital emulations that we use in our DAWs. Making your own presets is a powerful way to claim ownership over the sounds of your compositions. One of my students just the other day said to me, I just don't know how to go about getting the sound I have in my head. Well, besides thinking to myself, I'm a bad teacher, I should have got to this earlier, I thought, well, we can do this. So let's take a look today at uh, some techniques of subtractive synthesis. It's got a weird bunch of vocabulary words to learn, but once you get past the engineering jargon, it's pretty powerful and I think really fun. <laughs> My undergraduate degree is in electronic music composition and, and synthesis. And if I can dig it out, I want to show you a picture of me and my buddy Roy in the electronic music studio back in school. We've come a long way. But the basic principles of synthesizers, hardware synthesizers from those days, carries over into the design of digital synthesizers in our DAW. And in fact, to understand it, we'll look a little bit more at uh, this. The basic sound is created by an oscillator. And here we have, oh, three possible oscillators. And they can be tuned to what looks like um, numbers that are multiples of, uh, well, sort of two or four, or eight. It's doubling every time, isn't it? It's because it's an octave. That's a carryover from organ manufacturers of the 17th century. Well, it's because engineers think in terms of um, mechanical objects. It's easier to think about that even when you're working in electronics. An oscillator creates a vibe. Oscillate means vibrate, and it creates a basic tone. Those tones have um, shape as pictured here. Anything from a triangle wave, which is a pure sound, up to a saw wave, which has all the overtones. And I want you to please spend a little bit of time looking at my video on the basic physics of sound and overtones. It's well worth it. And it, it will help you understand what we're talking about here. Those oscillators move to the right and are mixed together. You can add a little bit of noise. And when they say noise, they actually mean whoosh, actual noise. And then these, this modifier section will do a couple of really, really important things. The first is a filter, which will allow more or less high frequencies through. Some filters are more complicated. They'll focus on other frequencies. And we'll also create an attack time, a slow attack time or a fast attack time. How quickly it releases, slowly or very quickly what the basic level as you hold a key down is, high or low. All those things create the overall impression of the sound, how it begins, how it sustains, how it releases. So let's take a look at RetroSynth. RetroSynth is um, set up like the Mini Moog, but maybe a little bit simpler. You've got uh, tabs for uh, sync, table, and FM, and I don't want to get into um, that kind of synthesis. Today, we're looking at subtractive synthesis. Why is it called subtractive synthesis? Because we're actually using a filter. You see it moving here. I'm just, I'm not making any sound to change the sound. I'm going to mix the, just to oscillator two, and I'm going to set the shape to a saw wave, which is a fairly, um, buzzy sound. Now, as I move this filter to the left, listen to what happens to the sound. The high frequencies disappear.
the basic actually actual shape of the waveform, if we were looking at it on an oscilloscope, would change as well. I'm going to change the shape with the shape knob, and you can hear it almost becomes what we call a sine wave. The filter plays an enormous role in the overall sound of our synth. And here we actually have types of filters. Now, LP24DB Lush is kind of confusing until you break it down. LP stands for low pass. It's letting low frequencies through. 24DB means 24 decibels per octave. That's how much it's pulling it out. And a Lush filter is kind of an old-fashioned, probably a Moog-type filter. But we have other options. And if we look at them, we can see that we don't have to pull down um, the filter as hard per octave. It can be only 6 dB or 12. In the old days, ARP, Moog, the manufacturer of hardware synths in the late 70s and 80s, all had their own particular style of filters. Low pass was the basic one for instruments. But it doesn't have to be a low pass filter. It can be, and you probably have been exposed to stuff like this before, a band pass. It will only let certain frequencies through. It could also be a high pass. It will cut out the lows and let only the highs through. So for the time being, let's continue with um, a simple sounding, what are we going to do? Yeah, let's go with this basic 24 dB filter. And it really does make a difference. I'm going to change the shape back to a saw wave. And I'm going to mix back in oscillator one. What if we take oscillator two now and tune it down an octave? And then change the tuning by sense up a bit. You can probably hear that at three or four cents, there's actual beating taking place, and that's kind of great. It's kind of organic sounding. S engineers decided right away that one of the things that we want to have happen on a filter is for it to track the keyboard. When I play a low note, that sounds great. If I, however, turn keyboard tracking completely off, it's kind of dull up there. Let's turn, let's turn up the keyboard tracking and you'll hear it, it'll open up higher up on the keyboard. And that makes for a better sound. Keyboard tracking was an important way to get um, synthesizer keyboards when you were going to play with two hands to sound a little more realistic, more like a, a piano or an organ would sound. Um, well, resonance does something terrific for us. Do you hear the kind of squelchy effect? Well, what happens with resonance is you can see it happening. Where the filter is breaking is actually being emphasized a little bit. It's kind of a cool sound, and it's a characteristic sound. And probably one of the most important sounds that we have in synthesis in the early days is that feeling of, of having a resonant filter moving a little bit as we play a pattern. Well, that's super fun for me, but, you know, I'm an 80s kind of guy, early 80s. And you can control that in most synthesizers by asking an LFO, LFO right there, to control the filter. LFO stands for Low Frequency Oscillator. Well, an oscillator is something that vibrates. 
And when we hear a note, it's vibrating at least 20 times a second, which is pretty fast. And then as much as, well, you know, 20,000 times a second. But a low frequency oscillator oscillates slower than that. You know, once a second maybe. And we have L we have an LFO right here. You can see it's going pretty fast right now. Can I change the speed? Where do I change the speed? Oh, it's the wheel control. So here's my rate control. Let's take it down to uh, twice a second. Uh, yeah, I'll say three, about three times a second. You can see it's gonna affect the filter now. If I play a simple chord. Do you hear it opening and closing the filter? I have the, the LFO synced off, but if I sync it on to the tempo of my DAW, which is right now at 120, and change the shape of the wave to a square wave. Let's check the speed up so that the, the rate is like eighth notes. I'll actually get a kind of a great percolating effect. Now, the filter's not controlling, being controlled by the LFO. Listen to what happens as I increase the control. I can then modulate this if I'd like. I could uh, automate this maybe in Logic. All right, enough of that. Super fun, right? Filters and LFOs controlling the filter. The sound of this um, instrument is not exactly where where I want it to be. I want to make a bass sound. So I'm going to go down into what uh, uh, the original synthesizer engineers called an envelope. Uh, engineers call something that, take a look at things that change, and they describe the change in terms of an envelope. That is, how does it start? Then what happens? then what happens, then what happens. I don't know why envelope is the word they decide. It's just an, it's an English word that, that has a bunch of different meanings. And I mean, a, a better description of it might be something like what's happening over time. Well, there are two kinds of envelopes that are important for us. And the one that I wanna look at first is the amp envelope. Amplitude is volume because like an amplifier in the old days, you actually had to amplify the signal. And we've got a couple of important points to look at. A stands for attack. How fast does it start? Right now it's starting fast, 40 milliseconds. Let's make it zero. It's okay for me. And then this break point here, decay, D, is how fast it goes down to its sustaining level. So like, this point here, you can see, is controlling both the sustain and the amount of time it takes to get there. So decay and sustain are kind of related, aren't they, at least in this graphic. Let's make it attack and be loud and then quickly decay to a lower sustain. Right now, it's releasing in 38 milliseconds. Let's make the sustain really long, 10 seconds, uh, four seconds. You'll hear the difference. Still there, bring this up. It's way too long, of course, it would make a really bad bass sound, so I'm gonna take this down. Now, there's another envelope, the filter envelope. And the filter envelope is controlling this filter here. Its initial attack is 40 milliseconds. Now I'm gonna make it zero. And I'm gonna make it go down. And this knob here will control the amount that the filter is being controlled. Again, this is something you could automate in logic and probably any DAW. Well, 
play around with your subtractive synthesizer. I probably you have one in the DAW somewhere, an oscillator, a filter, a couple of envelope generators. You can make bass sounds, string sounds, all kinds of good stuff. I'm very curious to hear what you come up with. Like and subscribe. Um, I'm just so happy to be able to offer these thoughts. I know this is a real fundamental lesson, but at the same time, I feel it's really crucial. I'll see you next time. Mm -hmm.